All right, so crafting foam or fun foam is this type of foam. Get a little bit of shadow. My light's coming straight down, so it kind of reflects. But you can get it at Joann's, Walmart, any place pretty much with crafting supplies. At Walmart's and Joann's, you can get this for about $5, maybe a little bit less so at Joann's if you have a coupon. I don't suggest shopping at Joann's unless you have a coupon, but the best way to get the most bang for your buck and as well as spending the least amount of money per amount that you have is to go to Michael's. This is where I found this big, big roll. Beforehand, I was looking for them and they didn't have them in stock, but after a while, they did stock them in white because I needed the white because my Plasti Dip, which is the finish that I put over the weapon before I paint them, was black. Every time that I get the Plasti Dip, it's black. So if I put black on the, the black crafting foam or fun foam, I can't see what I had painted on and what I had painted on just yet. But I found this for $8, and then you get way more crafting foam uh, in this big roll at Michael's if you can find it, as well as if you can get Plasti Dip in different colors. You can always use the black fun foam if they only have that at Michael's around you or anything, but I suggest getting this if you can. I could for a while, as I said before, because I didn't stock it, now they do. I use this especially for bigger projects like this. If you just need something small and you're only doing this once or something like that, this is good, but not exactly for shields, not as much for shields, because they're such a big project. They need a lot of foam, and as well as whenever you have a piece like this, it doesn't cover up the whole thing. So therefore you have to fill in the gaps with more things of fun foam. Whenever you do that, you have just the slightest of edges. It's never like quite perfectly clean. It still looks good, but it's not as clean as it could be if you just used an entire big roll like this. So the next thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to be covering the front, the back, pretty much all of the shield in a layer of fun foam, and then we're going to move on to detailing the shield after that. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to cover this entire shield, everything but the inside of the handle and the handle itself. Everything else is going to be completely covered with the fun foam or craft foam that I mentioned earlier. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this on top of here, grab a sharpie. This is just the way that I do it. There's different ways that you can cover the entire shield and fun foam. Just take a sharpie and mark it around the edge doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. We're gonna be doing touch-ups on it later. Alright, now that you got those pieces cut out, the next thing you're going to do is just dap both of the shield and the fun foam, just one side each. You're not dapping anything over anything, so it's not hard to dap both the sides. And then wait for it to dry and put it together.
All right, as you can see, I've dapped the front and the back, including these little points here, because we want to cover those in fun foam as well. Basically what the fun foam does is takes all the little bubbles away, makes it really smooth to make it look like an actual shield, as opposed to blue foam just covered in plasti dip and paint, which we'll get to a little bit later. Next, we're going to dap the pieces of fun foam. I can't show that too well without the whole screen getting dark, as you can see. So, but basically just dap the entire side of one of these sides, then work on the next one for the back, and dap the entire side of that side as well. All right, now that I got both of those dapped, what I'm going to end up doing, which is a special thing with fun foam in particular, is I'm going to go back over it once it's a little more dry with a second coat of dap because of the fact that dap really sucks into fun foam quite a bit and doesn't leave a lot to grab onto. So I like to do a second coat so it doesn't peel up as much as it normally would if I didn't use a second coat. It's not really a big thing, and it doesn't happen all the time, but I do want to avoid that because it ha does happen some of the time. And now we're just going to wait five to ten minutes for that to dry. Uh, of course, dependent on where you are. And we'll stick them uh, to the shield itself. Then we'll go around the edges with it. All right, so I'm a little dumb, and I didn't end up pressing the record button on the next step. But as you can see, I took that dap piece of fun foam, and I put it on here, just pressed it all down, make sure that it was nice and flush. These edges kind of folded over the edge. So what I did was I just kind of pressed down around the edges and made it fold over the edge until it was nice and flush, as you can see, to where it's not just kind of coming off the edge. And I just kind of compressed it. I compressed both sides together at the very end. But as well as what I ended up doing was I just laid the other piece down on top of here, pressed it down all around the flat sides, and then pressed down specifically around the the squares here because fun foam is extremely forgiving it stretches it molds it compresses so you don't have to be exactly perfect on what you're doing you don't have to have like lines or anything cut out and matched up exactly because of the fact that fun foam is actually very forgiving but what you want to do is you want to press it down and make sure that you're pressing down around these edges really well because it's difficult to get the fun foam to stick to the blue foam a little bit if you're just kind of laying it over a surface and then pressing down. So just make sure that you get around all those edges around each side so that all the dap is connecting to itself and will stay there for the rest of the shield's life. So, since it was all one piece though, one of the things is that I cut out the square in the handle. It was all covered with fun foam. I just punched a hole in it with my thumb, pulled up a little bit and went at it with a pair of scissors here and just kind of work my way out to the edge and then just continued cutting along the edge of the blue foam so that you have an opening for your hand to grab into the shield. So that's the way that I did that. There's other ways you could do it where you could literally like mark out two squares and then lay down the fun foam and then lay down two pieces of fun foam on this side and then over this top and over this bottom. But I thought that was going to take a little too much time as compared to me literally just laying it over the blue foam 
and then cutting it out with a pair of scissors. So I decided to use this method, method instead. So next what we're going to do is we're going to put fun foam all along the edge of this shield making sure to cover up every part of blue foam that we can. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is cut out a two and a half inch strip of fun foam to go along all the way around the edge. And real quick, I'll measure out the perimeter of the shield so that I know how long that I have to make the strip itself. I'll be using one of these cloth measuring tapes for that. Just to go all the way around about 64 inches. We want to make sure to make the edges over, overlap a little bit, make them a little bit bigger, because you can always cut off excess, but it's more difficult to add on more later. So make sure that edges overlap a little bit and cut, just cut off the excess, and we'll clean it up with a Dremel later, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Another thing that I'll do to make this process a lot faster is I'll take one of these. They're self-healing mats that you can cut across. And a lot of people use it for fabric, once again, found in fabric stores. Again, they can be pretty expensive, but if you can find coupons, they get a lot cheaper in the long run. But what I'll end up doing is I'll take this ruler. I'm using this mat so I don't cut into my own table. I'll put it at the two and a half inch mark. And then what I would normally do if I didn't have this mat is I would cut across it. Here, I'll bring the uh, camera over a little bit closer. Have it on the two and a half inch mark here. And normally what I would do is I'd just take a sharpie, if I didn't have the mat, mark it along the edge like this, and then cut it uh, with a pair of scissors afterwards, but that takes quite a bit longer. So what I'm going to do instead, now that I have this mat, is I'm going to take this rolly cutter here. Uh, also, once again, fabric store. Uh, find a coupon, you'll find it for much cheaper that way. And what I can do is literally just like a pizza or something, line it up with the edge of the ruler and cut all the way across as you can see I now have a two and a half inch strip cut now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dap one side of this I'm gonna double layer dap it to make sure that it stays strong and then I'm going to dap this wait five minutes and stick them together the thing is that this side of the blue foam is very bubbly so it's going to soak up the dap a little bit more. So you're going to put a little bit more dap on the foam surface itself than you normally would with the face of a layer of blue foam. Alright, so next what I'm going to do, now that the dap is dry and tacky, I'm going to go ahead and put the strip around the edge.
All right, so it looks like I didn't have the strip quite long enough to cover up the entire outer perimeter of the shield. So I'm gonna cut out a small square to dap and put into this place to fill this pocket. And then also it looks like one of these sides wasn't quite wide enough and I'm gonna have to put a small little piece of fun foam, dap it, and then put it into this little corner here uh, in order to completely cover the shoe the fun foam. Alright, next up what we're going to do is there's two ways you can do this. You can either use scissors to the best of your ability to cut along the edges here and cut off the excess to make it like naturally rounded looking and not without these, uh, these edges on here as you can see. But the other way that you can do it is you can use a Dremel. You can find Dremels at Harbor Freight, at Home Depot, at Lowe's, any hardware store and it makes life a whole lot easier when working with fun foam because you can have edges like these and you can get rid of them real quick with just a buzz of the dribble around the edges. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to try scissors to see if I can't do it a little bit that way and if not I'll go at it with the dremel. Otherwise just try and line up the fun foam a little bit better so that you don't have to cut off as much excess so that the scissors are easier to handle. Or what you can do is whenever you are making the two pieces of fun foam and putting them on the top and bottom you could have made circles wider and that way that they would come to meet in the middle around the shield like this and those two layers would go over each other and clap onto each other like that and you just cut off like what is kind of the mold line so there's many different ways you can do that uh, those are just a few suggestions this is what I did because I have a Dremel so we're gonna see what we can do